Okay, so this is the third video for the lectures for the third week of October. And basically, this is a continuation on discrete probability distribution. So this is part two of the lecture. And in our first lecture for this topic, we covered the introduction and motivation. Also, we discussed two discrete probability distributions, the binomial distribution and the hypergeometric distribution. Today, or in this video, we're going to focus on three other distributions, specifically the ne negative binomial and the geometric distributions. And finally, we're going to talk about the Poisson process and the Poisson distribution. So, as I mentioned at the beginning of this lecture, or in part one of this lecture, the learning objectives for this topic is to understand the assumptions for each of the discrete random variables presented. So, I'm presenting you five different discrete probability distributions. So, I want you to be able to understand the assumptions for each one of them, and also to understand when to use them. The second learning objective is to select an appropriate discrete probability distribution to calculate the probability in specific applications. Finally, I want you to be able to calculate the probabilities and calculate the means and variances for each of the probability distributions presented, which are five again. Okay, so let's continue with this lecture. And specifically, we're going to start with discussing the negative binomial and the geometric distribution. So the negative binomial. So a binomial experiment in which trials are repeated until a fixed number of successes occur. So in the negative binomial, negative binomial distribution is a binomial experiment in which trials are rep repeated until a fixed number of successes occur. So for example, let's say uh, historical data indicates that 30% of all the bits transmitted to a digital transmission channel are receiving error. An engineer is running an experiment to try to classify these errors. And we'll start by gathering data on the first 10 errors encountered. Okay? So, what is the probability that the 10 error will occur on the 25th trial? And that's the type of question that we can answer using the negative binomial distribution. So this example follows a negative binomial distribution. You have repeated independent trials. The probability of success is p, and the probability of failure is 1 minus p. Random variable x is the number of trial of the trial on which the k success occurred. Okay, so the probability associated with the k success occurring on a trial is given by this formula, which is very similar to the binomial distribution. Okay? So we have k represents the success number, x represents the trial number on which that k success occur, p is the probability of success, and q is 1 minus p, which is um, the probability of failure. In, in your book, you'll see that the negative binomial mean and variance is not included. So that's why I added the, that information here to this slide. So you have the mean and the variance for the negative binomial distribution. So let me go back. Sorry. So here's the mean, and here's the values. And those parameters are, are defined here. The k, the number of the success number, x, the trial number, p, the probability of success, and q, the probability of failure. So, to answer the question, what is the probability that the 10th error occur or will occur on the 25th trial? So we have the success number, 
less than. We want to know what is the ten when the ten error is going to occur. X is the trial number, which is 25. We want to happen in the trial number 25. P is the probability of success. And Q, 1 minus P, is the probability of failure. So if we solve this using the negative binomial, we can replace the parameters with our numbers. And we find that that probability is equal to 0.037. OK, very simple. Again, this, uh, this probability description is very similar to the binomial. The only difference is that, that now you're looking at the specific in terms of when you want that success to happen. Okay, so let's look at an, another example. A website contains three, digit, three identical, identical computer servers. Only one is used to operate the site and the other two are spares that can be activated in case the primary system fails. The probability of a failure in the primary computer from a request for service is 0 0.0005. Assuming that each request represents an independent trial, so an independent trial, what is the mean number of requests until failure of all three servers. Okay, so the first question, or the only question, is basically asking you about the expected or the mean number of requests until failure of all three servers. So going back to here, we know that the expectation is going to be equal to the success number divided by the probability. So the expected of the random variable is equal to mu and is equal to k divided by p, where k is the number of successes. So in this case, we have three servers, and we want to know when are the three are going to fail. So three, in this case, a, fail, a success is going to be a failure. And the probability is given by 0 0.005. So that means that you're going to need 6,000 requests for that to happen. Okay. Okay. So now let's add one more question. What is the probability? that all three servers fail within five requests. So the probability is the probability of x being less than or equal to 5 and because X denotes the number of requests to <clears throat> the third failure.
we know that the probability of x being less than or equal to 2 is going to be 0 because we have three servers. Okay? So that probability that all of them are going to fail when you only have two requests is zero. So you need three or more, right? Therefore, the probability of x be less than or equal to five is going to be equal to the probability of x equals three probability of x equals 4, and the probability of x equals 5. And that is equal to 3 minus 1, 3 minus 1, times 0 0.0005 cubed, times 0.9995 to the power of 3 minus 3 plus 3 2 0 point 0, 0, 0, 0, 5 3.9995 the power of 1 plus 4 out of 2, 0 0.0005 to the power of 3 times 0 0.9995 square. And that again equals 1.249. Ten to the minus nine. So it's a very small number. Okay, so that's that probability could be is basically zero. Okay, which makes sense. Because you have three servers, you know that the expectation is telling you that six thousand requests are gonna be needed for all of in average for all of them to fail and you're trying to test five requests, you know that probability is going to be very small based on the expectation. Okay, so that probability is very, it's close to zero. Let's look to a different example. Here we have, in a clinical study, volunteers are tested for a gene that has been found to increase the risk for a disease. The probability that the person carries the gene is 0.1. What is the probability four or more people will have to be tested before two with the gene are detected? Four or more, so that's very clear. The probability of X being greater or equal to four. which is equal to 1 minus the probability of x less than 4. And again, the same thing happens here. So you're looking at 2 or more. So the probability of x equals 1 and x equals 0 will be 0. So you have 1 minus the probability of x equals 2 plus the probability of x equals 3. And you have 1 minus 1, 1, 1 minus 0 0.1 to the power of 0, 0 0.1 square plus 2, 1, 1 minus 0 0.1, 1, 0 0.1 square, which is equal to 1 minus 0 
sorry, 0 0.01 plus 0 0.018 and that equals 0 0.972. RB is asking how many people are expected to be tested before two with the gene are detected. So again, you see this part. You know what the question is asking you is the expected value. So the expected value of X is equal to R over P, which is equal to 2 over 0 0.1, and that is 20. Okay, so there's a couple of examples for the negative binomial. Again, very similar to what you saw for the binomial distribution. But here, the important thing to remember is that this negative binomial is a binomial experiment in which trials are repeated until a fixed number of successes occur. So you have a fixed number of successes that's in negative binomial distribution. Okay, so let's transition to the geometric distribution. So continuing with our example in which P is the probability of a success, let's say 0.3, what is the probability that the first bit received in error will occur on the fifth trial? Okay, so this is an example of the geometric distribution, which is a special case of the negative binomial, in which k always equals 1. So the probability associated with the first success occurring on trial x equals this expression p times q, we know q is equal to 1 minus p, to the power of x minus 1. And in our example, that probability is equal to 0 .70, 0 0.072. In terms of the mean and the variance for the geometric distribution, we have the mean equals 1 over p, and the variance equals 1 minus p divided by p squared. So let's look at this geometric distribution example. So here we have the probability that a wafer contains a large particle of contamination is 0.01. If it is assumed that the wafers are independent, what is the probability that exactly 125 wafers need to be analyzed before a large particle is detected. Okay, so here again we're looking at the first success, geometric distribution. Okay, so let x be the number of samples analyzed until a large particle is detected. So this is a geometric distribution random value with probability equals 0 0.01. So the probability that x equals 125 is just p hundred and twenty-four times 0 0.01 which is equal to 0 
0.0020. Another example. The probability of a successful optical optical alignment in the assembly of an optical data storage product is 0.8. Assume the trials are independent. What is the probability that the first successful alignment requires exactly four trials? So again, you're looking at the probability of x being equals 4, which is just using the geometric times 0 0.8 that is equal to 0 0.0064 now let's look at the second part what is the probability that the first successful alignments requires at most at most we identify at least this is at most four trials so when you see at most that means that you're looking at the probability of x being less than or equal to 4, which is equal to the probability of x equals 1 plus the probability of x equals 2 plus the probability of x equals 3 plus the probability of x equals 4. Okay? So here we have 1 minus 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 plus 1 minus 0 0.8 1 times 0 0.8 plus 1 minus 0 0.8 to 0 0.8 plus 1 minus 0 0.8 3 times 0 0.8 and this will be equal to 0 0.9984 let's look at part C which is essentially the inverse what is the probability that the first successful alignment requires at least 4 trials Okay, so for this case, we are looking at the probability of x greater or equal to 4. So this is 1 minus the probability of x being less than 4. So this is 1 minus the probability of x equals 1 plus the probability of x equals 2, plus the probability of x equals 3. And if you solve this, this should be equal to 0 0.008. Okay, so far, today, in this video, we have covered the negative binomial, the geometric distribution. So there's one more distribution to cover or to discuss, and that distribution is the Poisson distribution. Okay. So first let's discuss what a Poisson process is. In the Poisson process, the number of occurrence in a given interval or region has the following properties. First, memory less, which means that the number in one interval is independent of the number in a different interval. So let's say you're looking at a period of two hours. So if you know that in the first hour uh, five customers arrived to the store, in a Poisson process that doesn't affect the number of arrivals in the second hour. 
So that's what we call that is memoryless because what happens on the first hour do not affect the number of variables that you're going to have in the second hour. Okay. So the probability of occurrence during a very short interval or small region is proportional to the size of the interval and does not depend on the number occurring outside the region of interval. And the probability of x greater than 1 is a very short interval is negligible. Poisson process situations, well, the number of bits transmitted per minute, number of calls to customer service in an hour, number of bacteria present in a given sample, number of hurricanes per year in, in a given region. The probability associated with the number of occurrences in a given period of time is given by the Poisson. So this probability is given by this expression, so you have the exponential to the power of minus lambda t. Lambda is the average number of outcomes per unit time. So if you know that the average for of customers arriving to this store is 10, that's your lambda per hour. So in one hour will be so 10 customers. Per hour, when you multiply times time, let's say you're looking lambda t and you're looking at one hour, so lambda t is 10 customers in an hour, and you multiply that by one hour, this cancels, so your lambda t is 10 customers. Okay, so that's the average number of outcome. Um, let's say you're looking at a period of two hours, so that will change your lambda. Lambda will become 10 customers an hour times two hours, so your lambda equals 20. Okay. So this is something you need to be careful, okay? You have the lambda and you have to look at the, the units that you're using for your lambda. So if it is based on hours, then you need to be sure that your units corresponds to those that are presented in, in the question that you're trying to answer, okay? So you're gonna have to be careful with the units. So if X is a Poisson random variable with parameter lambda, then the mean and the variance is just lambda, which is a very nice property of the Poisson. The mean and the variance is the same. Let's look at this example. An average of 2.7 service calls per minute are received at a particular maintenance center. The calls corresponds to a Poisson process. To determine personal and equipment needs to maintain a desired level of service, the plant manager needs to be able to determine the probabilities associated with the number of service calls. The question is, what is the probability that fewer than two calls will be received in any given minute? Okay, so for this problem we know that lambda is 2.7 and our units are in minutes. Moment. So the probability of having less than two calls is equal to the probability of x equals zero plus the probability of x equals one. And that probability can be expressed as e to the minus 2.7, 2.7 power zero, zero factorial, plus e to the minus 2.7 times 2.7 yeah, divided by one factorial. In the next sample, we have the number of telephone calls that arrived at a phone exchange 
is of the model as a Poisson random variable. Assume that on average there are 10 calls per hour. 10 calls per hour is going to be our lambda. Question A is asking what is the probability that there are exactly 5 calls in 1 hour. Okay, so let's start by defining uh, our random variable. So x is the number of calls in one hour. So this follows a Poisson with lambda equals 10 per hour. So the question is asking what is the probability that exactly five calls happens in one hour. So that's x equals 5. And that is e to the minus 10. 10 to the power of 5 divided by 5 factorial. And this is 0 0.0378. Part B is asking what is the probability that there are three or fewer calls in one hour? So that's the probability of x being less than or equal to 3. And if you solve this, you're looking at the probability from x equals 0 to x equals 3. So you go from e to the minus 10 plus e to the minus 10, 10 divided by 1 factorial plus e to the minus 10, 10 square divided by 2 factorial plus e to the minus 10, 10 cubed divided by 3 factorial. And this is equal to 0 0.0103. C is asking what is the probability that there are exactly 15 calls in 2 hours. So you have y is the number of calls in 2 hours. So now you're looking at the period of 2 hours, right? So that means that you need to change your random variable mean because initially we were using a period of time of 1 hour, so lambda t is 10 times 2, so that means that lambda t will become 20. So the probability of y being equal to 15 equals e to the minus 20, 20, 15, divided by 15, which is equal to 0 0.5. Okay, so again, you need to be careful with your lambdas. Let's make sure that your the units they are using correspond to the one the ones are presented in the question and also in the problem you're trying to solve. We have one more example. Here we have the number of content changes to a website follows the Poisson distribution with mean of 0.25 per day. Excuse me. What is the probability of two or more changes in a day? So, again, for this problem, I'm just going to state the, the probability. So, here you have the probability of x being greater or equal to 2, right? Because you're asking two or more changes in a day. So that would be equal to 1 minus the probability of x equals 0 plus the probability of x equals 1. And that is equal to 0 0.026. What is part B? What is the probability of no content changes in five days? Okay, so remember this lambda is per day. 
Now the question is asking in five days. So you need to modify your lambda. So lambda becomes 0 0.25 times 5, and that is 1.25 per 5 days. And what is the probability of non-contingent changes? So that's the probability of x equals 0, which is equal to e to the minus 1.25, and that is equal to 0 0.287. The last question, what is the probability of two or fewer changes in five days? So that is the probability of x being less than or equal to 2 with lambda equals 1.25 because again we are looking at five days. So that is equal to the probability of x equals 0 plus the probability of x equals 1 plus the probability of x equals 2 and that equals using the Poisson using is equals to a 68 okay so again this is another example for the Poisson distribution and that basically con concludes the, the lecture on discrete probability distributions. So in this lecture, we basically went through uh, the introduction and motivation for using probability discrete, discrete probability distributions, specifically those, that, those models that are frequently used in engineering. And that can help you find models to analyze some of the problems that you're going to be encountering in the future. Specifically, we discuss the binomial distribution, the hypergeometric, the negative binomial, and the geometric distribution. Finally, we went and discussed the, the Poisson process, and we also discussed the Poisson distribution. So again, these are five distributions, five discrete probability distributions, which are very important. And that you will see a lot, especially if you are in the industrial engineering program. Um, so this concludes this lecture. This is the third video. Uh, hopefully you you enjoyed the, these these lectures or this experience video lecture. And just go now and check tracks. Should have a homework posted uh, based on the material we cover in these three videos. You only have to submit those uh, problems that are marked with the with the star. And you need to submit that homework by Monday the 22nd. So I'll be back here on Thursday, all day, and Friday. So if you have any problems answering the questions in the homework, feel free to stop by on Thursday uh, the 18th or Friday the 19th. Or send me an email to schedule an appointment. Okay, so that's all I have. Thank you for your attention and See you next week.